Welcome everybody. So uh, this is another upper limb trauma viva. We've got uh, Bigad uh, in the hot seat. So are you ready? I will lead. Yes, um, I'm ready. Okay, you've got this 52 year old lady fell at home yesterday on her outstretched hand and she's presented to the A&E department. Look at the x-rays and tell me how you'd manage this. So this is a plain radiograph and posterior view and lateral views um, of a skeletally mature individual of the wrist joint and part of the hand showing um, a distal radial coolies fracture um, with some dorsal comminution, dorsal angulation uh, and shortening. Um, I believe this would be classified as fragment type four, which is extra articular extending into the distal radio ulnar joint, but not into the radiocarpal joint. And I can see a small ulnar styloid fragment. I would like to obtain x-rays ideally of the joint above, which is the elbow. I would like to ask the patient, uh, and I'll assess the patient according to the ATLS guidelines um, uh, and ABCD approach, assuming that she's neurovascularly intact and this is an isolated injury. I would like to know more about the mechanism of the injury, her comorbidities, her handedness, her occupation, and her hobbies. Isolated injury, neurovascularly intact, uh, right hand uh, dominant. This is her right arm, and she is fit and active. Okay, great. Um, well, I, I'm initially concerned about the degree of displacement, the shortening, and uh, the dorsal comminution. Um, uh, however, uh, I'm aware that this can be managed non-operatively if I'm able to reduce it in, uh, in a better position, an acceptable position, uh, with no, without shortening, uh, restoring the radial inclination, uh, the radial height, and a volar tilt of neutral, or at, mac at most, negative five degrees, which means dorsally angulated five degrees. This is the acceptable criteria. If I'm able to achieve this position, I'll offer her a non-operative treatment in a well-molded plaster. Initially, I'll start with a back slab um, because of the soft tissue swelling and edema. And uh, I will also make sure that she doesn't have any signs of compartment syndrome of the hand, uh, no signs of carpal tunnel compression, and uh, no signs of injury of the extensor pollicis longus tendon. Um, I would then schedule her for weekly follow-ups in clinic for senior x-ray follow-up. And if it, if it remains in a good position, I will change the, the, the back slab into a full plaster mm -hmm. uh, cast. Um, and again, see her in clinic in a week's time. If it okay. remains in a good so position, at, can... at week one, uh, do you expect from the pattern of fracture for it to stay as it is, or do you expect that it might uh, drift away? I would be worried that it will drift away because of the dorsal comminution. And I, I would have a low threshold. Uh, and I would explain that to the patient, that we will try the non-operative route because we will avoid the risk of infection, avoid the anesthetic risks, um, 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 and, and all the problems that can happen with an operation. And yet get very good results if, if, if it remains in the good position. However, I would explain to her that the, with this pattern of injury, there is a risk that it will drift away um, and, and then we will need to go down the operative route. Okay. Um, so I would have a low threshold to, to switch from non-operative to operative, assuming this happens. Okay, so let, let's assume that this happened. You brought her in a week uh, later, and now uh, the dorsal uh, uh, angulation is, is now a bit uh, more than you would like. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, um, at that point of time, I will cons I'll speak to the patient, discuss with her the different options. We will probably need to do um, um, an operation to get this in the right position and fix it. The method of fixation could be K-wire fixation, smooth uh, metal wires that are inserted to hold the fracture in place after we reduce it to the right position, and um, then offer give her a plaster cast, and then these wires are usually taken out in clinic in four weeks' time. Um, the advantage, simple, easy technique, mm -hmm. um, a quick procedure, uh, no need for a long incision, and then it's easily removed in, in clinic and low risk of infection. However, the other alternative is to do a plate fixation, a small incision, get it right position and put the plate in screws. Um, however, it's a more lengthy procedure, more risk of injury to the nerves, vessels and surrounding structures. Um, but what will I you do? Offer her a K -wire fixation. I'm aware that there's the draft trial that was done in the UK comparing K wire fixation and plate fixation, showing no uh, uh, much diff no significant difference regarding the functional outcomes between both operative techniques. So I'll discuss both with the patient's advantages and disadvantages, and it's it's basically a choice that I will take with my patient. Okay, I I totally agree. So you're going for wire fixation. So tell me, how are you going to place your wires? 
I would uh, choose to do Capenji wiring, interfocal wiring through the fracture uh, side, use them, insert them and, and hold the volar cortex and then use them to reduce the fragment uh, uh, and then drive them into the uh, volar cortex under eye, eye guidance. And then I would give her a back slab for uh, more stability. Okay, thank you. Time's up. But how many wires were you going to use? Um, I would use uh, two dorsal wires and then I would add uh, a radius styloid wire if needed to attain the stability required. Are you going to address the uh, ulnar styloid fragment? Uh, no, I'll just make sure that the distal radio ulnar joint is properly reduced and this is confirmed by II in theaters. Um, the ulnar styloid is very small, fragment and should not affect the stability of, uh, of the uh, droid, so I will not do anything about the ulnar styloid. Okay, thank you. Okay, what do you think? I think this is a very common um, um, scenario that comes in everyday life practice. Um, it's very important. It also comes up in the exam. And it's those simple things that you can get caught uh, in the exam. So you need to have a very logical order of thinking. Um, and um, I think one thing I did write is to discuss with the patient the different treatment options, explaining the advantages and disadvantages, starting from operative versus non-operative, and then even when the operation was decided, which, which technique of fixation will we use, K-wires or uh, uh, plate and screws, you need to be uh, clear with the patients. Those are the techniques used. This is the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and, and the decision is basically with the patient. Uh, so you mentioned began the uh, draft uh, trial. Um, and it's a very famous UK uh, trial. I'm not going to... Uh, talk uh, about it in much details. Uh, there's the ongoing uh, draft two. Um, I don't believe that the results are out yet. And this is looking about um, treatment in a uh, plaster versus K-wire fixation. Uh, but I think until we have the results, um, you can mention it, but um, you can't advocate plaster uh, over K-wire or vice versa uh, until then. Okay, uh, any comments from anyone? Oh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.